Hi everybody, today I'm going to be talking about how to install Windows 9X on an NEC PC98. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the PC98 hardware, the PC98 is completely different from the regular PC in quite a few ways. But as a result of having its own modified version of DOS, and having hardware that is completely different to a regular PC, using a PC98 with Windows necessitates having a special version of Windows. Now this version of Windows is, it's on the 98 and 98 SE install media for retail for sure. It's not on the OEM install media unless it's specifically a PC98 OEM recovery disk. However, the thing is, the retail version has both install, it has both versions, both installers and whatnot. Also, it might be the same for 95. I haven't really messed with 95's install media for the PC-98 because the thing is, OSR2 for the PC-98 only existed in recovery disks, and that's the version I tend to use. While the other version in 98, uh, Windows 95, is RTM, so you really only have two options there on the PC-98. There's also another version of PC-98 Windows 95 for Epson's only, but this is not an Epson, it's an NEC, so... The Epson version, to my knowledge, has some workarounds and tweaks for special Epson stuff. So, let's talk about what you need to install this, because it's a completely different install process, at, because it's completely different hardware. And I'm not going to talk about Windows NT, because the installation process is very similar, and also Windows NT, for the Japanese version, has all the architectures on the disk, including the PC-98. Well, it doesn't have the Fujitsu FMR, but... Fujitsu was kind of stubborn about distributing their OS their own way back in the day. So, let's take the disc out. I'll show you what you need. So the first thing you need with PC-98 Windows is you need a floppy disk for Windows 98. Now, there's two disks. The first disk is the disk you'll probably end up using, and it's essentially it's essentially the official boot media and it just, it's just, you know, kind of like the other architectures where you put it in and it tries to boot 98 but it lacks format and you have to seek the CD drive to get format. You have to go into the CD drive, go to the 98 directory and get format there. This is a modified boot disket that somebody on the PC98 Discord posted. I think it was Flying Aruka. And so, this is a universal boot disk that has a SCSI driver on it for loading SCSI CD drives in case you have a PC-98 with a dead internal CD drive or no internal CD drives like a proprietary one such as in the PC-98 21AN, AP, AE, AS, that sort of thing. So if you only have SCSI CD drives this is a good disk too. I'll put a link in the description. So you need to have this boot disk. I'm going to put this in here. I need to have your 98 CD and the CD-ROM drive. If it, has, if it has a Windows 98 N directory, it's the one you want. It cannot be Win 98. It has to have a Win 98 N directory. So we're going to turn the 98 on. The first thing to know when you're doing this is that you have to have the memory hole enabled. And you can tell because it'll pause and seemingly skip over a little bit of memory when it does the memory count. If it does that, you have the right boot disk. If it does not, then, I mean, if it does, you have the BIOS settings set correctly, and it, you probably should. If it does not pause, you have to go into the BIOS and change the memory hold on. Otherwise, Windows is not going to work, because it needs to have a memory hold at 15, 16 meg. It's very important. See how it stopped just a little bit below 80 megs? That's because the memory hole's on. That means it's set up properly. If it stopped at 80 megs, the memory hole would be off. So you have to turn on the memory hole to allow the video controller to work. Because if you have like a PC-98 with an external video controller or a PC-98 with a built-in video controller alongside the PC-98 video hardware, such as like what this one has, then you have to do that. So... Right now, Windows is booting, or well, the OS is booting, and we've got three options, ATA, SCSI, and an option for some proprietary CD drives. And that's what this modified boot disk has. So, 
there's a few things we have to do differently on a PC-98. Now, on a regular PC, you would fire up FDisk to clean the hard disk and make your partitions. We cannot do that on a PC-98, especially if we have a hard disk that came out of a PC or a Mac, or other computer which took IDE hard disks, such as a Spark, for example, because some of those took IDE hard disks. If you've got a hard disk from any computer that's not a PC-98, you're going to have to clear it. So what you will do is type in disk in it. Now, it's going to ask us the hard disk. We've got a SCSI hard disk in, so it's going to be SCSI 1, I mean SCSI 0, and hard disk number 1. If you have multiple disks, it's going to list several. And we're going to choose to wipe SCSI IDE 0, which is disk 1. So we're going to hit Y, and what's going to happen is it's going to take a while. What it's doing right now is it's currently clearing out the hard disk, essentially low-level formatting it, possibly. But you have to do this every time you put a hard disk in a PC-98. You have to run disk in it. If you have a hard disk from another system, you have to do it. If you're installing an OS that's not Windows, you might want to do it just to clear off any weirdness from the hard disk. And this will take about maybe 20-30 minutes, so depending on the size of the hard disk. So that's a good time to you know, grab some cup noodles, put some Hot Pockets in, make a cup of coffee, do whatever you want to do. Or just post on the internet or post on the Fediverse for 12 hours. You know, well, not 12 hours, like 30 minutes. That's what you can do. You can run upstairs, post on the Fediverse for 30 minutes, come back, and it should be done. All right, so I ran back and I forgot about this for a few hours because I had to stop at someone else's house and do some stuff, but we're back. And. The hard disk has now been initialized, so what we're going to do is tap N, and next we're going to run FDisk. And then from now on, running FDisk on a PC-98 is just like it is on a regular PC. You create your partitions, and you wait a little bit. And that's what you do. You literally just type in that you want to create a partition, and you'll notice something weird about the DOS PC-98 port is that it has a bunch of quirks. For example, FDisk on the PC-98 uses a text color, while it didn't on, you know, a regular PC. It was just all white text, while on the PC-98 it's, it has colors, because they're nice, and they want to be cool. It doesn't show up too well on the camera, but, as you can see, the, uh, 28, 29 percent, the percent, the Y, the 1, those are all a green color. So what we're doing here is we're formatting the, well, we're not formatting it, we're just F-disking it. We're creating the partition, which takes a while. And then you have to actually format it. And just like on a PC, you have to reboot. So what we're going to do is we're going to reboot it. Now you can either hit the reset switch. Or since we're running Windows 98, we can actually now control command delete. That's one of the cool features. I mean control graph delete, not control command. Why did I think of Apple for some reason? Okay. Control graph delete. On a PC98 running DOS, that doesn't do anything without a TSR, but on Windows, it does by default, even in the DOS. Which is nice because on this PC98 we don't have a reset switch, unlike on the uh older PC-98s. This is a 9821RA20 that doesn't have a reset switch. Many of the value stars don't have reset switches either, so you have to control uh, graph delete. And that essentially resets the system. It's not a hard-coded thing in the hardware kind or close to it like it is on a PC. Instead, it's only in later versions of PC-98 Windows. And if you use a TSR and DOS. So we're here, and we're now just going to format the drive. Now, if you're going to be installing Windows 95 or copying all, I mean OSR2 or copying all the files to the hard disk, what you're going to want to do is add S to this. But right now, we've got a B drive because our PC90 only has one floppy drive. If our PC90 has two floppy drives, we're going to use C instead. So. Format B. And you'll already notice one quirk about the PC98 platform already. 
the drive lettering is completely different than on a regular PC. When you boot from a floppy disk, it's both... The drive you booted from is relative to what floppy drive it is. If it's in drive 0, it's A, or drive 1, it's A. In drive 2, it's going to be B. But if you only have one floppy drive, drive B is C. Well, it's the hard disk, essentially. And if you have two floppy drives, it's going to be drive C. But when you boot from the hard disk, floppy drive 1 is B, and floppy drive 2 is C. Very, very weird way of doing things, but that's the PC-98 for you. So we're going to format B. And being that we've got a SCSI hard disk, it doesn't take as long. Or it shouldn't, in theory. But it does. So when you're formatting the hard disk for the first time, it takes quite a while to format as well, just like it did when we did disk in it. And it's just going to slowly format, which means you could also go back for a while. Alright, so now the hard disk is formatted. And so I'm going to press enter now because now it's asking what do we want to name our partition? Or put a label on it at least. Of course, that's not the same as putting a label on it in FDisk which is what we're going to back, go back to. Because there's something else you have to do in FDisk that I, that's very important that I forgot to mention. We're going to hit 2. And what we're going to do is hit number 1. So PC98 FDisk, when it makes a partition, sets it to non-bootable by default. We don't want that. If it's non-bootable, what's going to happen is it'll try to boot, and it'll load an 88 basic instead, or give you a you know, boot device screen. We do not want this. We want to load our operating system. So change that to bootable. It'll beep to confirm. Escape, beep again. And now what happens next depends. Now if you're just going to be installing like Windows 9X or copying all the files to the partition that we're going to be doing it, first we're going to, we would, uh, switch to the CD drive, which is Q in this case. And we would use xcopy to copy Win98N to the directory. We would copy Win98N because that's the PC98 version of Windows. If we were using the PC98, uh, the official PC98 install disk, which I will be in a second, you would also have to switch to Win98N to do format. Because if you use Win98 to do format, that's the PCAT version. It won't work. It will not format the disk. You have to use Win98N because that's the PC98 port of Windows 98. So now I'm going to be putting in the original PC98 boot disk. But there's one more thing that's very important that you'll have to do if you're going to copy over Win98N. And that's aside from getting X copy from a working Windows 98 install or a uh, Windows 98, uh, the cabs in that directory. You also have to sys the A drive. Now the Windows 98 setup disk will do that automatically, but what we're going to do is go to, we would have to go to A and we would type in sys B, or we would type in format, format S. We would do one of the two, and that would get the system files onto the drive. So I'm going to be showing you a few things with this disk as well, the PC98 Windows 98 setup disk, because that's the other one. We're going to switch into that one, because it's a bit different than using your own Windows boot floppy that you made yourself. So we're booting into that now. We've got our quick RAM test. And we've also got something a bit different, which is our SCSI check. Because if this is a NEC SCSI card, there's no text when it does the SCSI check. So, that's why there's a pause. we got to wait a little bit. So this is the PC-98, and you basically get to select all these different CD drive drivers. You know, for different models, there's a bunch of them that had their own specific models. 
But the thing is, most of these drives can run off one CD driver, which is number 8. And this CD driver is the default PC98 CD driver. Or at least it's the uh, driver for, uh, for IDE, pretty much. So it works with most PC98s. And now we've got ourselves our PC98, Windows 98 uh, initial setup. You'll notice the screen color is different. That's because the PC98 video hardware is not VGA. It uses the dual GDCs and then all the other chips they added later on. And the color palette of that is a bit different. So the color for this is a bit different. Instead, you've got essentially the text colors are inverted and you've got black text on a uh, white background. So it's asking us, it's basically wanting us to do setup. And we're going to choose the top option here. The bottom option switches your boot drive to C. And you don't want that unless you're trying to run some stubborn programs which insist that they're on the C drive. Because normally we're on the A drive on the PC98 world. But they began to add that option because of, you know, misbehaved PC programs, presumably. I'm going to assume that that's the case because that's the only reason they would do it. And so we've got our hard disk it's asking us. And now what it's doing is it's sissing files onto the A drive. And now this next step is very, very important. The PC98 does not function like a normal computer does. And this is going to throw you off if you don't know anything about how the PC98 works because it did years ago when I had my V13. So right now it's literally copying the files that like a basic DOS partition to our boot drive. It does not do this on a PC. And the reason for that is, I don't know, it's because Windows Setup wants to be run from the same drive it's installing to on the PC98. This is not the case on a regular PC, but it is on the 98. So when you hit enter, you're going to get nothing. It's not even going to check the drive. You're just going to hit enter non-stop and you're going to be like, what's going on? Well, I'll explain what you have to do now. You literally have to take the disk out. Now, because the PC98, it can sense if there's a floppy disk in the drive, kind of like Max and stuff did. It doesn't even try to check, so you'll hit enter and nothing will happen. Then you take the disk out, hit enter. And it wants you to do this because it's now booting into the minimal DOS partition it's made on the hard drive to install the operating system. And so we've got ourselves this boot screen, and it's checking the SCSI disks now, which adds some time to any boot if you have like a PC98 with SCSI, which you should. And now we've got ourselves the boot menu. So the options are the same, but here's the thing. You have to get the same one you did when you booted it, because it doesn't remember, and if you hit the wrong one, you'll have to edit the files or restart the whole process at least with formatting it because it will essentially edit auto exec to basically lock you into the drive you choose so we're going to choose seven because that's the drive we have the other options are only if you have those other drives by the way which we don't here and now it's starting set up with scan disk which also has that obnoxious color I hit enter. Oh, it paused it because this is PC98. So, what we're doing here is a scan disk, and it also looks just like PC scan disk, but with more obnoxious colors. And I think these were new with, at least some of these tools were new with the PC98 version of Windows 95. Because PC98 DOS, like 6.2, had its own weird utilities for some stuff. So, right now we're at Windows setup is loading. And once you're past that, everything is pretty much the same almost one to one with installing it on a PC. I mean seriously, that this is mostly the hard part. You're we're now out of the hard part here. We're finally onto something familiar. Except for the fact that we're on 24 kilohertz video still or maybe not even that. 
It'll, it's telling me it's 640 by 480, but instead of uh, 24 kilohertz. Anyway, so Windows 98 is now copying files to the hard disk. And it's just, it, this is just like any other Windows 98 install you've ever done. There's a few differences, sure. But other than that, it's, it's literally every Windows 98 install you've done. We've got 16 color video right here because this is a PC 98 and not a PC. And the fun fact is, with the PC 98, the video subsystem is radically different from a PC. There's only 16 colors. You get to pick from, uh, I think it's 16 out of 4096. You get to pick from any of these 4096 colors you can display on your screen at once. And so it gives the PC-98, along with its high resolution, a unique uh, video system designed perfectly for displaying anime girls and not for displaying your horribly done Tumblr art with those proportions and those weird faces that you just can't erase no matter how many stylistic filters you put it through. It's like, it's like when somebody told me about this uh, Sonic fan artist who went to art school years ago. And basically what happened was she literally put her art through like all these filters, but it still looked like Sonic OC art. And the same goes with like your trashy Tumblr art style. Don't do that, people. If you get good at art, the PC98 will reward you with well done art. And we gotta put in a product key, which is just like which is literally the same exact one that'll work on your English version of 98. If you have an English copy of 98 lying around or something you can literally put in your product key. So, just put it in here and we'll go from there. And also if you have 98, you know, I mean 95, well, same thing applies. The whole uh, the whole weird OEM dash random number, I think it's like a specific number pattern, that'll still work. Okay, now we're past that. And essentially if you're installing the retail version like I am, you're going to want to use a retail full product key from a full, re I mean, probably a full retail version of 98. I'm pretty sure that's the book key it looks for. I don't know if 98 checks to be sure a key is retail upgrade or retail full, but I know 95 had different formats if you had a retail copy and different if you had a uh, OEM copy. The retail one was shorter, the OEM was the long OEM in the key. So it's now installing to A, which is going to throw you off if you're used to the PC. But that's what the PC98 does. Your boot drive, your first, your first boot drive is A. And it changes depending on if you've booted from the floppy or the hard disk. I don't know what NEC's rationale behind this was, but it was something that somebody in NEC did, and it carried over all the way to Windows 98 SE, which is the last DOS-based version of Windows for the PC98. And I... I might have carried over to NT4. I haven't even installed NT4 for PC98 in a while. And the last time I did, I needed to have a keyboard that worked with it because this Sonoma Supply keyboard does not work with NT. And as you can see, it's it's kind of slow because our CD drive. So if you were to copy the files to the hard disk at this point, you would probably shave a fair bit off of this install time but that's just kind of how the PC-98 is. And then from here on, it's literally just the same as any other Windows 98 install. I'm only really showing you this part because I kind of want to get this, uh, I kind of want to essentially uh, show off a few little weird differences. So putting in your name, it's not going to work if you put in a name here. What you have to do is you have to essentially, let's uh, grab the mouse. Let's grab the mouse real quick. Cable okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch it to uh, A, and I think you have to switch it to half width. There's something you have to do. Okay, I think that's half width. So we're in half width now, as you can see by the symbols being that. In the corner, you have to change that to an A, and then you get like essentially Latin typing or vaporwave typing if you're poisoned by Tumblr or Twitter because Twitter is essentially Tumblr now and now that they're angry that the wrong internet daddy bought Twitter they're now trying to find the next Twitter except just like when people went off Matt like people went off uh, Tumblr 
and they went to Twitter instead of like 12 different sites. They, they don't even know where they're going to go this time. Because who uses Blue Sky? Who uses... Uh, okay, people actually use Mastodon, but they don't use... But the thing is on Mastodon, Mastodon's garbage. Use use a better Fetty version since like something running on Pleroma people. I'll put my Fetty link in the description so you people can follow me on Fediverse and yell at me about how crazy I am or something. And then it's the same thing as usual. We're going to name our computer. We're going to have work group as our uh, work group. And you can change those, but I don't think it matters much because the language is only in Japanese with the PC-98 port of Windows. There's no English language version of PC-98 Windows because being that this was a Japanese localized computer to begin with, there was absolutely no reason to have it. Because the chances that this, well, the only places that these things would find their way outside uh, Japan and into the West, at the very least, because, you know, when they were dumping, e when they're, when e-waste has been dumped into neighboring Asian countries, there's PC-98s that show up from time to time. But when it happened, but when, like, when PC-98s found their way to America, there were only really four reasons that you pretty much have a PC-98 in America. One is that you're trying to run some industrial equipment, like a Sodic CNC machine, or Atomo. It's a company that sounds like Amana. I think it's Atomo or something. Amato, one of those companies. Or if you're running factory equipment from them, or other factory equipment like that, you have a PC-98 doing that. If you were uh, localizing software for the PC-98, you'd probably have a PC-98 as well to do the port of it to the Japanese computer. And in fact, NEC was actually like offering developers back in the day localized uh, like chances to borrow a PC-98 to port it, or English localized versions of the documentation for programming a PC-98 that unfortunately are lost these days. And of course, there's also with the PC-98 the whole thing with, uh, how do I put it? Um, Oh yeah, the other way you'd have a PC have a PC98 is if you were part of a Japanese multinational corporation back in the day, and this was your work computer because you were from Japan or part Japanese or something or high up in this multinational company that was based in Japan. You had one, and I say that because I've heard stories from like people talking about how they knew somebody back in the day who worked at NEC in America and they had a PC-98 as their work computer or people who get PC-98s in parts of the USA and found out that the system had a past linked to NEC itself because NEC themselves were using PC-98s in America to do business stuff on. And nowadays, you know, the reason you have a PC-98 is the fourth reason, because you're like me, and you like weird computers or weird Japanese video games, and you, you care about it more than just firing up an emulator for five minutes or using a sprite editor or MS Paint to mimic what you think is the PC-98's art style for your Twitter retro posts. No, 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 it's because you actually are interested in this stuff and the games it has and and you want to get your own PC-98 and there's more and more people like this out there these days to the point where I've seen PC-98s turn up on eBay more and more often in fact I even got a friend of mine to buy a PC-98 listing I found cheap I literally sent this to him and I said hey dude I found a PC-98 cheap on US eBay you should totally buy it because believe it or not, they pop up from time to time on US eBay for sometimes decent prices. A lot of times, they are overpriced because of resellers, usually in different parts of Asia, charging high prices because for something that's probably tested. I have no idea if they're like DK oldies or if they actually test their stuff. But I'm pretty sure the support's better than DK oldies. <laughs> but the thing is, is there's a bunch of these high-priced sellers in different parts of Asia selling these PC-98s as industrial control equipment because that's kind of one use they had. So PC-98s on US eBay are heavily jacked up and you pretty much have to use a package forwarder if you want to even buy a PC-98. Like that's the only way you can pretty much do it. I mean without breaking the bank of course. Sure shipping's expensive but 
if sh but if you gawk about how shipping costs are expensive before blowing three hundred do two or three hundred dollars on an old Mac or something, honestly you have no room to talk. You really don't. I'm sorry, but I've seen that behavior from so many people who refuse to get into like computers like this. But I'm not complaining, it's a good normie barrier. It filters out people who have a skill issue from people who actually appreciate this stuff. And so it's, it says it's going to take 48 minutes, and I don't doubt it. I could probably run upstairs, do a few things, and come back, and essentially it'll be nearly, maybe, maybe halfway done. The problem is the CD drive on this PC-90 is slow. It's a slow, slow drive. And if you copy to the hard disk, it's probably much quicker. If I install a newer CD drive, it might be faster, but only as fast as the bus will go. Because if you put a new CD drive in an old system, you're, you're not going to hear it rev up real loud because it only runs at the low speed because all the drive can run at is the low speed because the system has a slow IDE bus. And I know this system has a IDE bus okay enough to play DVDs, but there's a reason I'm using SCSI for the hard disk. So I'm going to come back in about maybe an hour or so, and if I don't fall asleep, I'll show you what it's doing. All right, let's go. Actually, I lied. I might as well tell you a few more things that are kind of important. The first is why I'm installing 98, or why I'd install 95 OSR2. Reason number one is FAT32, and reason number two is when you have Windows installed, you can SMB into your computers much easier. Now, with Windows 10 and Windows 11 and Windows Server based on them, these PC-98s and other old Windows computers don't like SMB. Even if you turn on SMB 1.0, you can't remote into these old Windows 10, Windows 11 computers. I haven't found a way to do it. I know Samba on Linux is a lot less finicky about what it'll work with, so... If you're going to be doing that, I would suggest using Linux as a Samba server instead of trying to use Windows. Or the second option is you can use SMB1, enable it in Windows 10 or 11 as a client and not a server because this can't really connect to an SMB1 server. And then, S and then you re uh, remotely connect to SMB through the newer computer and copy the files on the PC-98. That's the other way of doing things. I like using a server more for a lot of reasons, but if that doesn't work, you can always just use your 9821 as an SMB server and copy the files onto it. It'll just go down when you reboot into DOS to run your DOS games. The other thing with the PC-98 and installing an OS is if you want to run older games, like games that need DOS 5, DOS 3, DOS 2, I would recommend creating partitions and using something like the PC-9 or different hard disks. You can actually use multiple hard disks and when you boot, you'll actually get an IPL selector that'll let you select which hard disk or OS you want to boot from. It's really interesting. I can't show it now because I only have one OS. But the PC-98 was cool because they, they designed multi-booting into the system years before a lot of people would think about it. And it actually has a nice boot manager, all things considered. So I would definitely do a multi-boot setup with like DOS 5. Possibly Epson DOS 5, because it actually has some cool backwards compatibility DOS simulation modes, which let you run programs that need DOS 3 and DOS 2 on DOS 5. Maybe DOS 3, maybe DOS 2. You could also put Windows NT on there if you wanted. Maybe even BSD if you've got a big hard disk or a SCSI to SD or blue SCSI or something like that. You could put in a nice little multi-boot setup. And the nice part about using those SCSI drive emulators is that since the PC-98 has a boot limit at a certain point, you can basically split up your hard disks and have several images on the bus and store a lot more data that way because the PC-98 will think that you shoved a ton of external hard disks or internal hard disks on it. And meanwhile, you've just got one SCSI to SD or blue SCSI or whatever they replace the SCSI to SD with just running all these fake virtual hard drives off one SD card. I would suggest doing that if you want to have a crazy multi-boot setup on the 98. Because the 98 is a fun platform. It's, it's a rabbit hole. I don't regret getting into this one bit.
The only thing I regret is spending too much money on it. And to be fair, it's, it's still better than spending money on Funkos and whatnot. So, like I said, you can see how in just a few minutes, that counter is not lying. This install is going to take forever. And, and nobody wants to watch a Windows install. So, I'm just going to run upstairs and come back. For real this time. And now we have PC98 Windows, for the most part, kind of set up. The, uh, unfortunately, our, yeah, our date and time, our date's fine, our time is a few minutes off, but thankfully this is all mostly normal. And that's a good thing because if you see the clock bouncing through years and days and the time is like zero, 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 it means your clock battery's dead, and you have to basically get a VL2330 battery and replace it. And that means soldering it to the wires. Now, something else you can see is that the PC98 is now using 256 color mode, and so you get a nice background you don't see on the normal PC version. And that's because the 9821s, which this system was, which this version was pretty much meant to run on, have 256 color in the PEGC chip. So you've, got the, so you've got this nice 256 color install screen which you never get to see on the PC version. Because the PC98 video system is quite interesting. In fact, the PC98 as a platform is very, very interesting. And that's about it for the most part. Unless you're installing drivers, which is pretty much the same as it is on a normal PC, you just put the disk in with the drivers you found on Wayback Machine and you just copy and paste it. You have to use Wayback Machine because Driver Guide unfortunately does not have much in the way of drivers for these PC98s. So yeah, you just sit back and wait and that's about it really. That's There's not much you have to click on a 98 installation like on 95, but it's mostly the same as it is on a regular PC. It's just a waiting game and that's what it is for the most part. And then eventually it finally reboots and you get your add new hardware screens. And it's always going to be one for the PNP monitor. That's pretty much a constant with Windows 9X. And you've pretty much now got your Windows install for the most part done. There's a few things you'll want to do when you're done. And I'll show you what they are real quick. The first one is to get drivers. And there's both drivers for NEC devices and also drivers for uh, essentially third party devices on their websites and NECs on theirs. And there's also the onarchive.org, some driver disks for old PC98s. And PC98s usually share consistent hardware, so drivers for one will probably work on another if it's close enough, like this RH20 has very similar hardware to like the value stars and the v16 aside from the chipset and if you install windows 98 much more hardware is supported out of the box as opposed to 95 where you'll definitely need drivers if i were to install 95 on this same exact ra20 but third party cards you definitely need drivers for like there's a sound card in here that needs a special driver for 98 I'm going to have to install that from a floppy disk or put it over SMB. Second thing to do when you're done is to, of course, give yourself some screen resolution. And it's it's loading, it's taking its time. First time boot of Windows 95 and 98 is always like this. You've got that slow first boot, especially when you got a 200 megahertz processor. So we're gonna click this out. We're gonna go to first thing we're gonna do is change our screen resolution. I'm holding the mouse and just moving the ball with one hand. And we're gonna turn it up to like 1024, 768. And we're gonna go to uh oh yeah, 24 color doesn't work, just 16. Apply without restarting. And we've got ourselves more color and resolution. You'll have to reboot for all the icons to pop up. The second thing to do is uh, we don't have our sound card devices. See, we only have Main XPCM. I'm going to have to install the sound driver, but make sure to install your drivers when you're reinstalling Windows. 
and make sure you have copies of the driver disks and especially for the network driver. The third thing you can do is uh, make a folder and we're just going to call it a uh, file share or something. New folder. That's, that's where it is. I'm going to call it file share and share it on the network. And of course, that's not installed, so we got to go here. And we're going to add. Now, see, we don't have sharing. You have to install that. We're going to install Microsoft. Uh, once you install that, you just have to click this button below. Let's see, we've got Microsoft sharing enabled. And we're going to go to file sharing, make sure that's checked. We're going to hit OK. And it's going to install it. And of course, in typical I need fashion, we have to reboot to do anything because this is not Windows NT and unfortunately you have to just stay endlessly rebooting. Do you just love 98? It, it's just like this. And make sure you have copies of your install media because just like on a regular PC it's very easy to trash your 98 install by doing something you don't know about. Especially on the PC98 port it's very easy because you'll probably you know, try running something that doesn't work on a PC98 and whoops, you just bricked your install. Alright, I'm going to make this quick because this unofficial third-party Nikon D600 battery doesn't last too long. So first off, you're going to want to go to this tab and go to sharing. You're going to enable it. Full access, no password. And now you have access to your PC98 on the network to copy files over, copy over 7-zip, copy over uh, the disk editor utility, edit D, I think that's what it's called, edit disk. Second thing you're going to want to do is, um, I'll make another video on this or talk about this later, but here you've got your Windows 98 system file editor. And the most important things are config and audio exec. And you can edit these and have a multiple boot menu for your PC-98, like C, how it's got all that stuff remmed out. But see, you can have a... I know I would totally clean this up because it's messy, but once you do this, you can have a nice multi-boot menu for your PC-98 with different, uh, different memory managers for different games, different drivers, like CD drivers different uh, RAM managers because there's a more efficient RAM manager where the compatibility works or it doesn't so you could have like different RAM managers different drivers different all that with a multi-boot menu just like you can on regular DOS and that's really all that has to be said about it and otherwise you know just fire up Microsoft chat and and tell people on IRC that you have a PC 98 and you're so much cooler than them Anyway, like, subscribe, comment, and be sure to follow me on Fediverse. That's all that needs to be said, gamers. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Oh, look, I'm going to talk to some cool kids on Microsoft Chat. Woo! Thanks for watching, gamers.